the TOS and today I'm going to be reviewing the Raspberry Pi 3. A few days ago I got the Raspberry Pi 3 and today I'm going to be, review, uh, be reviewing it. So for those of you who don't know what a Raspberry Pi 3 is, it's basically a $35 computer. It's not as good as a MacBook or maybe a Windows or a Windows phone or something like that. But it's just $35 and you can do quite a lot of things on it. So, um, let's get to it. So, what I have here is um, a wooden board to keep my Raspberry Pi 3 on. So it doesn't um, get any scratches and the wires don't um, corrupt themselves. Um, if it goes on this glass or the glass doesn't get um, ruined. Um, next of all, I have the 2.5 a power supply for the Raspberry Pi. It's a micro USB charger from this um, from Canakit.com, www.canakit.com. And of course, next, I've actually got the Raspberry Pi 3, and we'll get to that in a um, few seconds. So. You might be wondering, how is a computer going to fit in here? Well, it's just actually the motherboard and all of those processing chips inside here. You've got the green board that you find in regular computers. There's nothing else. You've got no fan, um, there's no monitor in there, and no keyboard, no mouse. That's why from my computer, I've got um, my wireless um, mouse here and it's USB port and my keyboard uh, USB and my Logitech um, keyboard you can see there so before we start unboxing what I'd like to say is you can actually as well as using um, um, power USB cable meant for the Raspberry Pi 3, you can get one um, and make it yourself by using a USB to micro USB wire plugged into let's say your phone charger and you can charge the Raspberry Pi 3 computer and power it using that. So let's get to it and let's see the Raspberry Pi 3. So I'm just going to open this up. And what we get when it comes is an anti-static bag and as you can see as I was saying um, the first thing you see is the green motherboard or the main part of a computer so there's that I'm just gonna put this back to the side and next of all let me just put this box aside as well Next of all, we've got the Canakit um, from Canakit.com micro USB charger. So let's get this. And what we have in here. Oops, wrong wire. Let's put this to the side. Here we have the micro USB charger. So, you might be wondering, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, and you might be wondering that how are we actually going to see the computer, how, where's the monitor? So for that, you need, uh, you actually need an HDMI cable to plug into this and connect to a monitor such as your computer monitor or possibly, um, here's the HDMI port, or possibly uh, an HDMI TV, though that will require more power consumption from the Raspberry Pi, and then you're good to go. So let's now talk a little more about these features, including the USBs, Ethernet cable, HDMI, and much more that you find in the Raspberry Pi 3. Okay, so as you know, the Raspberry Pi 3 is the third generation of the Raspberry Pi. 
It replaced the Raspberry Pi Model 2, um, the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B, in February of 2016. So let's go over some of the features in the Raspberry Pi 3. So first of all, we've got some uh, four USB 2.0 ports right over here. You can see the two ports on each of these towers and that equals four ports. Next of all, also um, many people went on commenting, commenting on their website that um, why aren't there like 3.0 USB ports? Well, this is a $35 computer and it's meant to be cheap. So if um, they put 3. Point, the Raspberry Pi Foundation put 3.0 um, USB ports inside the Raspberry Pi 3, then it would be way too expensive and that wouldn't be the goal of the foundation. So we've got four USB ports there. And next of all, we've got an Ethernet uh, cable port right over here. There, you can plug in an Ethernet cable for um, good Wi-Fi. Next to the um, Ethernet cable, there is an all-in-one video and analog um, video and audio um, analog port with a 2.5 millimeter jack right over here, as you can see there. Um, next to that, there is a HDMI con um, connector in which you can um, connect any of your um, um, the monitor for the Raspberry Pi 3 you can connect such as a HDMI TV or an HDMI uh, monitor that might have been for your old computer. You can plug that in there and you can see the interface of the Raspberry Pi. Um, next to that, there is a uh, micro USB port as you can see over here from there you can put in the micro USB um, power supply you can plug it in as you can see there and with that you can have power to your Raspberry Pi 3 um, let's flip over to the back as you can see on the back we have a micro SD card slot which is for storage and storing the operating system and any data files and um, the operating system uh, you can store on that micro USB um, card slot back over here we have next to that some GPIO pins many GPIO pins um, on the right side well um, for you guys the bottom side of the Raspberry Pi and over here we've got the Wi-Fi um, antenna doesn't really look like an antenna but that is actually in fact right over there that little silver um, spot that is the Wi-Fi antenna and this is a big upgrade from the Raspberry Pi 2 um, now this Raspberry Pi 3 has much better Wi-Fi and it has um, cordless Wi-Fi and so you don't need the Ethernet cable but you can still plug it in if you need to and after that um, there is also a Bluetooth system that works incredibly well much better than the uh, Raspberry Pi 2 on the Raspberry Pi 3 so now let's go to the actual um, CPU and GPU they are located right over here in this um, black square and over there, there is a 1.2 gigahertz, 64-bit quad-core ARMv8 CPU. So that might be a handful, mouthful, I mean. So what is that? Let's say that again. 1.2 gigahertz, 64-bit quad-core ARMv8 CPU. So let's go to a bit of a um, bit some history. So anything you do on any electronic device translate to a set of instructions, which is code, that are then executed line by line by the CPU, which is this, in the hardware. While one is, uh, instructing is uh, instruction is executing, the CPU cannot execute the next instruction, since it is said to be busy. So this is a 1.2 GHz CPU. So what does that mean? 
1 gigahertz equals 1 billion cycles or instructions done per second. So 1.2 gigahertz CPU equals 1.2 billion instructions completed per second by the Raspberry Pi 3. So uh, now as you can see, this CPU is a quad core CPU. This means there are four cores, four cores in this CPU. That means that um, this CPU is quite powerful and can actually complete four lines of code or four instructions per second instead of just one by one CPU. There's basically four CPUs inside this one CPU because there's four cores. Next, um, we have 64 bit. What does this mean? 64 bit simply means that the CPU can process data in 64 bit chunks. A bit, for your clarification, is the smallest units, unit of storage in a computer. ARMv8 basically stands for a type of CPU made by the company ARM. Um, next, we go back to the Wi-Fi. And this uh, Raspberry Pi 3 has a 802.11 N wireless LAN, LAN, which basically means um, 802.11 N stands for um, the latest type and fastest speed of Wi-Fi available today in markets. So next to what we've got um, Bluetooth 4.1, which is the second second best version of Bluetooth available in the market today. And then there's also Bluetooth Low Energy, uh, which is also symbolized as BOE, which means what it says. A version of Bluetooth um, Flow 4.1 that allows for less energy usage from um, both linked devices, which is the Raspberry Pi 3, and whatever other device it's connecting through, through the Bluetooth. And then those um, four features were improved statistics for the Raspberry Pi 3. But we've also got some um, features that are the same. There is 1 GB RAM and RAM is basically one of the two types of memory in your Raspberry Pi or any electronic device. It stands for random access memory and when you turn on your computer or Raspberry Pi in this case, your computer reaches into its hardware and main memory to reach the operating system from um, the many files inside your Raspberry Pi 3. It does this and stores the operating system, the OS, into your RAM and then it holds the RAM holds it there for quick usage as you run your device. If you um, open another application, its data is also stored in the RAM until the RAM gets full and then certain applications running in the RAM are taken out and put back into the main memory. Uh, of your Raspberry Pi. As I said before, some more same features are four USB ports and 40 GPI pole pins for connecting printers and external devices and hardware. A full HDMI port over here for connecting the monitor or HDMI TV. An Ethernet port over here. And combined 3.5 mm audio jack and composite video over here for recording audio and video through external devices. There's a camera interface in the Raspberry Pi 3, a display interface, and the micro SD card slot, as I said, right over here, which is the same as, um, which is the same as the Raspberry Pi 2. And finally, we have a video core for 3D uh, graphics core, which is part of the display. So that is a complete overview of the Raspberry Pi 3. And now let's get on with it and let's uh, actually download the operating system into this Raspberry Pi 3. Now for a few minutes the Raspbian operating system is just going to be downloaded onto my Raspberry Pi 3 computer. So once this is done, we can go on and then explore the awesome features of the Raspberry Pi 3. Three hours 
later. Okay, so here we have the initial boot up of the Raspberry Pi 3. And as you can see, um, it looks really nice. So we've got a background of a bridge leading into, I think, New York City. I think this is New York City. I'm not sure though. Um, but we've got the taskbar on the top and the wallpaper kind of desktop area in the bottom. So we've only got one icon right of now uh, in the desktop area, which is called documents. But otherwise, in the taskbar, we've got lots to explore. So over here, we've got the applications menu, uh, which is labeled by this Raspberry Pi 3 um, symbol of the Raspberry Pi 3. So we've got programming, some programming applications, which are already preloaded. So we've got like BlueJ Java, Genie Programmers Editor, Greenfoot Java, Mathematica, Node-RED, Python 2, Python 3, and we've got a few more, Wolfram, Scratch, etc. We've also got some Office applications, which are kind of like uh, Word uh, applications, like Word and Excel for Windows, but this is for Raspberry Pi 3. So we've got LibreOffice Space, LibreOffice Calculator, which is like spreadsheets, LibreOffice Draw, uh, LibreOffice Impress, which is kind of like uh, slides, and LibreOffice Math, and LibreOffice Writer. And we've also got a few more things. So we've got Internet, we've got Clausmail, Raspberry Pi Resources, the Mac Pi, VNC Address Book, etc. And we've also got this thing called Chromium Web Browser, which we'll get into later, but it's basically Chrome for Raspberry Pi 3. It's kind of like a ripoff of Chrome, but for the Raspberry Pi 3. And we've also got games. So we've got Minecraft Pi, which isn't really like uh, really good. And we've got Python games, which are some nice Python games. And we've got some accessories like calculator, file manager, image viewer, PDF viewer, text editor, terminal, and ar ar archiver as well. And for help, we've also got a few more things. We've got Debian reference, which helps you uh, navigate through the software. And we've also got Raspberry Pi help. So if you're having any troubleshooting issues with your Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, in preferences, this is just basically another word for settings. So over here, we've got five columns. Um, actually, no, six columns. You can add and remove software, change some appearance settings, settings. Uh, there's main menu editor, mouse and keyboard settings, etc. And over here, this is all software and hardware uh, based settings. So you can change these settings. You've got the run. So you can uh, type in any command. I'm not sure of any as of now, but you can type in any command you want to execute. And we've also got shutdown. So if you click on that, you can throw the Raspberry Pi 3 to shut down, reboot, or log out as well. So over here, we've also got a few, um, what's it called? We've got a few um, applications in the taskbar. We've got internet. So Chromium's already opened here. So as you can see, Chromium, which is kind of like Chrome. And we've also got a few more things. We've got File Manager, as you can see. We've got Terminal for typing in any code. Calculator, of course, let's try this. One times one equals one. Awesome. And then let's go ahead um, and look at a few or more of these. We've got Wolfram, LX Terminal, and we've also got Clause Mail, which, as you can see, is this uh, kind of mail application, which I still have to set up. But on the upper right, though, we've got Bluetooth, so you can, as everybody knows already, uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 is actually Bluetooth compatible, so you can manage your Bluetooth devices. We've got uh, volume control in. Uh, we've also got the clock and you can eject your stuff safely using um, this button over here so if you have like a SD card or SD card reader applied to your Raspberry Pi 3 you can eject it safely using this button and as you can see the Raspberry Pi 3 um, also has this thing called a CPU monitor over here 
So right now the CPU usage is 66%, which is quite high. If I move my mouse around a bit more, as you can see, it's going to grow. And if I, um, let's say, open up a few applications, let's, like, hmm, let's go ahead and open up Minecraft Pi. 67, it's going to increase the CPU usage. So then, uh, all in all, the Raspberry Pi 3 is really, really nice. And it's a nice computer that's only for $30 and you can do a lot with it. You can search the web, you can um, do things that don't require that much CPU usage, you can play Minecraft, etc. And the Raspberry Pi 3 is really nice. And if you like this video, and if you like the Raspberry Pi 3, um, can you uh, please don't forget to leave a like and if you want you can also leave a comment and thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thanks for watching